Hi everyone, I just wanted to do a video on the women's uh, ovarian cycle, uh, particularly what happens to the corpus luteum if a woman is not pregnant, uh, if the egg hasn't been fertilized. Now of course, very complex, even for women this is very complex. Uh, and lots of questions on the test about this ovarian cycle. So probably the best way to uh, demonstrate some of the concepts here is just to take a look at this diagram that you have. And of course, this is on your page 19. Uh, and it's a typical picture of an ovary. And it looks at the different stages of devel development. So uh, this is something, again, I encourage you to print off, as I said in previous videos, print off the actual diagram, label it, uh, and then uh, utilize some of those flow chart concepts within the diagram itself as a really good strategy for this particular concept. So if we go through this, of course, we're saying that if you are not pregnant, so that's what we're saying in this video here. Okay, so immature follicle, we know that this is called, I guess a better name for this would be the primary follicle. And you can see what happens to the primary follicle. It starts to develop into this secondary follicle. Okay, now what hormone uh, initiates this or starts the development of the primary into a secondary is high levels of FSH. So day one of your ovarian cycle, this is about, I guess, let's put in some days as well because you will see questions that will ask you to at which days are these particular hormones the highest. This would be probably between days one and six. That's when FSH is the highest. Okay, and FSH, its primary function, of course, is to get one of these primaries to start developing into a uh, secondary follicle. Okay, so high levels of FSH cause this to happen. Now the secondary follicle will mature into, uh, now in bio 30, you don't really need to know this particular concept, but uh, in anatomy physiology, we call this a so we call this a graphene follicle. But in bio 30, we just call it a mature uh, secondary follicle, okay? Our graphene follicle. You can see that when you start getting this development of this pool here called an antrum, once that matures, we then call the secondary follicle more specifically a graphene follicle. Now, what this starts to produce, once it matures, it starts to produce high levels of estrogen. Okay, and that happens high levels of estrogen, probably the highest between day seven and 13, roughly, of the ovarian cycle. Ovarian cycle, day one starts with menstruation. Uh, and then once we get to day seven and 13, and only once we get to about seven or 13, do we start developing high levels of estrogen, only because the secondary follicle now has matured enough to produce it. This has multiple effects. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer video, but it really summarizes everything that you need to know really well for this ovarian cycle. Biggest thing that it does, number one job is it thickens the endometrium lining. And of course, that's where if the egg is fertilized, now at this point, nothing's been fertilized. We actually haven't even released the egg into the oviduct to be fertilized. But we have to prepare the uterus in case we do get uh, this egg fertilized. So we do that by thickening the endometrium. Of course, that's where a fertilized egg um, would actually embed into the endometrium uh, lining or in the endometrium wall of the uterus. Uh, second thing it does, it has a negative feedback on FSH. And what we mean by that is we are going to stop the production of FSH with high levels of estrogen. So that's, again, detected by the hypothalamus pituitary that says, let's stop releasing FSH. And the reason for this is we don't want another primary follicle developing into a secondary follicle. We already have one on the go. So the last thing we want to do is to develop another one. 
Okay, and the other thing that this has is kind of a positive feedback effect on LH. So it will actually stimulate the pituitary to release higher levels of LH. Now, LH has two functions. One of the functions is right here. Now, within this graphene or secondary follicle is the actual ovum. That's the egg. Okay, so what LH promotes, one of the things is ovulation. And this happens, and you need to know this, around day 14 of the ovarian cycle. Okay, so we actually release this egg into the oviduct. Okay, and this egg, by the way, and you'll see this in another question, uh, at this point hasn't been fertilized, so it has only 23 chromosomes. Okay, 23 chromosomes. So it's considered a haploid, meaning half the number of chromosomes as a regular somatic cell, half the number of chromosomes uh, being 23. And you're going to see later on that that would be 22 autosomal chromosomes plus 1x sex chromosome. Okay, totaling, like we said, 23 total chromosomes that that haploid egg or ovum has. Okay, the other thing that LH does is helps the development of this corpus luteum. So these remaining secondary follicle cells will then develop into the corpus. Okay, and this corpus does release high levels of progesterone. Now, of course, we're talking about if you are not pregnant. So if that egg is not fertilized, what's going to happen is this corpus is then going to degenerate. It's going to start to break down. But just before I do that, let's talk about the effects of high progesterone. High progesterone does a couple of things. One thing it does, it maintains... the endometrium. So the endometrium. Now this is if you are pregnant, it's going to do this. We'll talk about that in another video. The other thing it does, it has a negative feedback effect on FSH, just like high levels of estrogen did. Uh, and again, we don't want another primary follicle developing. And the other thing it does, it has a negative feedback on LH. LH has already accomplished its job. And its job, of course, was to uh, uh, promote ovulation. And the other one is to uh, promote the uh, formation of the corpus luteum. So once that job is fulfilled, high progesterone has a negative feedback on LH. We don't need those two hormones anymore. But if you are not pregnant, just as I said, uh, the corpus will then degenerate. If the corpus degenerates... Uh, that's going to result in a low amount of progesterone, okay? Because it's a mature functioning corpus that's responsible for releasing high levels. So if it starts to degenerate because that egg has not been fertilized, progesterone levels are going to plummet, okay? Once that happens, this is going to be detected by the hypothalamus hypothalamus and it's going to send a message to the pituitary to start releasing high levels of FSH and we start the cycle over again. So this menstrual cycle takes approximately 20 day, 28 days. It averages about 28 days. But this is how this, uh, the cycle is perpetuated, how it continues. So again, a good strategy uh, for this is to print out that diagram and then just do exactly what I've done that multiple times. Very confusing. You can see levels going high. What days this is happening? By the way, high levels of progesterone are after ovulation because the corpus has not matured or developed until ovulation occurs. So this is probably about days 15 to let's say about 28 is when you have high progesterone levels. Okay, once progesterone levels go down, uh, this causes 
the uterus to contract and this will lead to uh, a shedding of the endometrium and that is known as menstruation. Okay, so that starts to happen and again that happens around day one and we uh, start the whole cycle over again. So a good strategy, like I say, print this diagram off, rewrite this multiple times. What we've just done here, if you can simulate that and do that in the test, you're going to be very successful. Okay, thanks guys. If you have any issues with any of this stuff, you know, contact me via email. We can set up some time, go over it again. Uh, um, but if not, good luck on the exams and we'll talk to you guys soon. Thanks guys. Bye.